In this video, I'd like to discuss monoclinic materials and their linear elastic properties. So monoclinic materials are materials that possess a single plane or reflective symmetry uh, for their microstructure. Uh, common examples would be zirconium oxide, uranium niobium also has monoclinic structure. A lot of shape memory alloys also have monoclinic structure, so nickel titanium being a very important shape memory alloy. Uh, and these are just a, a couple. There, there are many materials with monoclinic symmetry. Uh, and so let's begin by assuming that the three-axis direction has been set up so that it's normal to the plane of reflective symmetry. And so that means that if I look at the symmetry transformation uh, expressed in my, my coordinate basis where the three direction is orthogonal to that plane of symmetry, it will be 1, 1, minus 1. So it's a reflection about uh, the plane whose normal is E3. Now, if I have this property for a material, then I'll also have this general relationship here that I can set up a second coordinate frame, the star frame, which is EI star equal to QIJ EJ. So notice that there's a summation on the J here. And material symmetry implies that the components of the elastic moduli computed in the star basis are going to be equal to the components of the moduli computed in the unstar basis, where the relationship, again, between the star and the unstar basis is given as such, where Q is a reflection uh, about a plane with the normal in the three direction. Now, one consequence of this is let's, let's just simply look at setting L equal to three. And if I set L equals to three, then I can also take advantage of the fact that I know that E3 star is equal to minus E3. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the L to three, and then I'm going to make use of the fact that I know from this relationship here that E3 star is equal to Q3 J E J. And if I expand that out, I'll see that this is equal to minus E3. So I'll make that substitution here for E3 star. So that means if I stick, if I have this minus sign, I can bring it all the way out front. And now let me consider, for example, noting that the fact that E1 is equal to E1 star and E2 is equal to E2 star. So I can use those two facts and that will tell me, for example, that C1123 is equal to minus C1123 and this is in the unstarred basis. So this is just in the regular EI basis. Now, that tells me that C1123 is equal to zero and the reason for that is because I have a number here C1123, and it's equal to its algebraic opposite. And the only number that's equal to its algebraic opposite is zero. So C1123 needs to be equal to zero. In fact, all components that have an odd number of the three index appearing will be zero because every time I use a three index, I'm going to pull out a minus sign. And so if I have two threes, the minus signs will cancel, I won't find any information. But if I have one three or three threes, I'll have a minus sign. And I'll end up with a condition like this where I'm gonna have a number equal to its opposite and it's gonna tell me it has to be equal to zero. So if I look at the elastic moduli, I put them in the six by six form, remember the ordering is one, one, two, two, three, three, two, three, three, one, one, two. So this is the void ordering. If I look in the upper left-hand block, all the indices appear in pairs, so they're always, they show up in even uh, quantities. So I have one, one, two, two, three, three, and things like that. I don't have a single three appearing anywhere or three threes appearing. So all of those constants need to be there. But if I move over into the next column, I'll see that C1123 is equal to zero. Well, that's what I just proved up here because the three only appears once. If I move down the column, I'll see that I get pick up two more zeros because C2223 has only one three in the subscript, so that's zero. And C3323 has three threes, so that's an odd number, so I get a zero also. If I go to the next column, I'm going to find out that all the entries there have to be zero because I'll have 1131 has one three, 2231 has one three, 
and 3331 has three threes, so that's odd, so I get zeros there. If I move over into the last column, there, the first two entries don't have any threes, and the third one has a three appearing twice, so that one survives. And then I can go into the lower right block. I'll have a C2323, so that's okay. Three is there an even number of times. If I move over, I'll have a C2331, two, three, three, one, two, three, so that's okay. But if I go over into the last column, I'll have C2312. There's only one three there, so that component necessarily has to be zero. And I can go to the next row down, I'll get 3131, and I'll have 3112, so the last entry will have to be zero there. And then I'll have C1212. And so you can see, instead of needing 21 elastic moduli, a whole bunch of these have to be zero. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them have to be zero. So 21 minus eight is going to give me 13. So there's going to be 13 unique elastic moduli needed to define a monoclinic material. So that says that essentially 13 unique experiments need to be performed in order to fully define the elastic moduli for a monoclinic material.